I'm going to run through a quick little demo here of uh, Sprite Kit, which is something we uh, ended up building in house for a uh, 2D game, uh, basically because we love to reinvent the wheel. We uh, took a look at all the other stuff out there 2D Toolkit and uh, EX2D and some of the other 2D frameworks, Sprite Manager, and they all seemed way too overblown for something as simple as sprite management. So, uh, in the effort of, in, uh, in the vein of duplication, we decided to go ahead and make our own solution. What a surprise. All right, so this just be a quick little demo. Uh, and this is something we, uh, you know, we may make a open source like route kit in the future. Uh, right now it's not at that, putting that level of polish yet. It's still real early on. We've only got a couple days into it, but uh, we're going to show the workflow of how things work with it. So uh, there's a sprite kit menu item, and what we, uh, we're going to do is go ahead and create a new sprite sheet. What this lets you do is you just pick a directory of images, and it's going to grab all those images, and it's going to spit out a material. It's going to spit out a, a retina atlas for you, and then it'll also have an SD atlas, half size. And that uses uh, SIP's command line tool in the background to create the second image atlas. So it's... Uh, about as high quality as you can get when you're downsampling rather than trying to do it directly in Unity. And then you get your actual sprite sheet itself. And let's go ahead and make one more while we're at it. So I'm just going to choose the second directory here. Alright, so it spit out another material for us and then spit out another atlas and spit out another sprite sheet. So we have an empty game object here and uh, let's just duplicate it a couple times this one as well. So uh, images one is also an empty game object and you know this is again we go for minimalist with everything. All these other sprite solutions we've seen have just a, a massive amount of scripts for, for creating something as simple as a sprite so we tried to dumb it down to the simplest possible. So you put an SK sprite on here and you know, by default it's going to do nothing because you have to choose your sprite sheet. So we're going to choose one of these and you see we get some more options here and we have a drop down with a list of all the files we have in here. So we can you know, pick our file, let's say we pick the Blackbird, and uh, it'll show the Blackbird. So some of the things we can do with this right off the bat are uh, you know, change your anchor. So if you wanted to change your anchor, you can do this. You can also do this at runtime. Uh, we'll just keep it bottom left for the time being. And uh, this will do automatic SD and HD. So when you actually uh, go to play your game, you'll see it loaded up the HD texture. And that's because uh, the screen was wide enough past the threshold for, for HD. Otherwise, it'll load up uh, an SD there. You can change your sprites by just choosing from the drop down. That's all it takes to change a sprite. So let's go ahead and make another one here. So just drop an SK sprite on here, choose a sprite sheet, and pick your sprite. So let's make uh, Gaia. And uh, I'm just going to rename this one just uh, for another little part of the demo coming up. And we'll throw another one on here and choose uh, the cat. Why not? All right, so we pop it over here. And you know, just to show uh, a second atlas we created here, we'll drop SK Sprite on here and go ahead and choose this images two sheet that we made before. And we can. Uh, Pick Angry Bird and make a couple more. Let's choose uh, Little Devil and one more while we're at it. And this one we'll uh, we'll use the bottom right for our anchor and we'll make some clouds. And you can see the anchor's bottom right here. Let's just line this up so it's proper straight on. Okay, so that's all there is to it for actually creating sprites. Uh, creating them at runtime has a, a really simple API. Uh, you have uh, three ways to create them. You can create a sprite specifying the actual sprite sheet and the image name. You can create one by just passing in the sheet name, or you can create one passing in just the image name. And uh, these two, two methods here that don't take in the sheet. These will actually load up the actual sprite sheet at runtime if it isn't already loaded. And uh, the way it does that is everything's in resources, so it can just use resources.load. 
All right, so um, one other thing you want to do in this, uh, if you're ever doing anything 2D, is create animations, of course. So the flow for creating an animation, you, uh, you know, basically want to name your files in order. There's no uh, you know drag and drop to reorder frames. So at this point in development, so uh, everything has to be named sequentially. And all you do is choose the menu item, create animation from selected, and you get a little dialog here where you can pick your wrap mode, loop count, frames per second, all that good stuff. And what happens when it completes? So let's do a revert to original. And if you want to take a look and see what's in there, you can look at your animation frames. So we click Save Animation. And we'll notice that in our resources, we now have animations. So that's all good and well. Let's go ahead and see what happens at runtime. Okay, so we have a few buttons here just to show uh, what, can, what this can do here. And flip sprite does exactly what you'd expect. It just flips it. We can make a random sprite, and that'll just pull a random one out. Uh, we can make a name sprite, and this is specifically making the little devil. And let's just clear that out so you can see it's easier. So test is, gonna, is just going to run the animation. So we name the animation over here Gaia. And so let's just go ahead and run it. So we can see it'll run through the animation for the specified number of loops. And we can flip it while it's happening, and then it stops when it's done. And the code to actually do that is all pretty simple. So uh, random sprite is uh, is the most complicated because it, it actually finds any sprite sheets in the scene first. And then it just picks the first one and chooses a random sprite from that. And it uses that create sprite method that we saw before and sticks it at a random position. Named sprites says uh, when it starts, the API starts to get a lot cleaner. And this is you know in reality what you'll probably use more often. You create a spite, sprite, you pass in the, the sheet name. So images2 is our sheet name. The name of the image, which was devil1, and where do you want the anchor? And then it'll just stick it at a random location. Playing animations, also incredibly simple. You, you grab your, we're just grabbing the game object and then the sprite component, and you just say start animation, and you pass in the animation name. And uh, the rest of the API in there for animations allows you to actually you know, do what you'd expect. You can set the iterations, play pause, play reverse, play forward, reverse it, stop, all that good stuff. And you can also, uh, if you have a bunch of animations on your character, you can do a preload animations, which lets, lets you just pass in a series of names and they'll actually just be uh, all set and ready for you once you're, you're gonna use them. So it doesn't have to load them at runtime. You can cache those ahead of time. And flip sprite, flip horizontally, real basic. All right, so that's Sprite Kit in a nutshell. It's uh, about as dead simple as you can get for uh, for a two D sprite solution. Automatic uh, retina loading. We'll probably add a, a four times in there as well for the iPad as things get closer. And if uh, if there's enough people interested, maybe we'll uh, we'll open source it and uh, see if we can get the community involved with making it a little bit better.